And joining us now is Ian Markham. He is Director of Pension Innovation at Watson Wyatt Worldwide and a member of the Ontario Expert Commission on Pensions. Yes, Steve. So you're the right guy to take us through Pensions 101 here, aren't you? We will see. We will see. I, I, I have great faith in you. As you know, not everybody watching this program is of a pensionable age. There are a lot of people who are actually very young who are years and years and years away from getting a pension or needing a pension and don't know what a pension is. So let's start with that. What's a pension? Okay, that's a good question. Pension is an arrangement where a fund is uh, set up for you and uh, monies are put into it by usually an employer, uh, sometimes by you as well, and it grows with interest. And at some point, you can start to draw an, an, a monthly amount from it, uh, which is called your pension, and, uh, and that continues until you pass away. Sometimes there's a surviving spouse who also gets a pension. That is a pension plan. Do you have to be 65 to start drawing on it? No, you can draw it uh, earlier. Many pension plans will allow it from age 55. In fact, the vast majority will. And uh, sometimes you can even draw it without uh, any penalty from, for retiring early if you've been with the company for a long time. Two different kinds, defined benefit and defined contribution. What's the diff? Very important to understand the difference. And in fact, there are many people who don't even know which pension plan they're in until they get closer and closer to retirement. Uh, the defined benefit type is the one where the pension is fixed. You can actually work out well in advance what kind of a pension you will get, what amount it will be. Often it's a percentage of your earnings. Sometimes it'll be a flat dollar amount. But you actually know what you will get as your monthly income. You can predict it. Uh, depends on how long you're going to work for. Uh, and that doesn't change regardless of what's happening in the markets? N theoretically not. Theoretically not. Uh, I'll come to that later on. Okay. Uh, the other kind, the defined contribution, is rather like your RRSP. <laughs> if you imagine your registered retirement savings plan, RRSP, and just think of your employer putting money into it, that is a kind of a pension plan. But there's also this thing called a defined contribution pension plan, which is rather like the group RRSP, like a, a bunch of people in an RRSP with the employer contributing. But it's, it's rather locked in, so it actually has to be used to pay for a pension. With your RSP, you could, you could just cash it out. Now, you were saying what's happening on the markets either does or does not impact the first one. Well, Go into it, that, if you would. Okay. The, the first one, the defined benefit, uh, it needs to have a fund of money there. And a, a person called an actuary, I'm an actuary, has to do a valuation every now and then to see that there's enough funds in there so, so that there will be enough funds to help pay all the pensions depending on when people leave. Uh, right now, the markets have uh, clobbered those kind of pension plans because virtually all of them are fairly heavily invested in equities, and we've seen what's happened in the public equities. They've, uh, they've gone down very significantly. So for those, those things uh, have what's called a deficit now. Pre most of them would have a deficit. Some of them would be a very large deficit. It has to be paid off. And th that's fine as long as the company stays around. If for any reason during the time that that deficit is being paid off, the company were to go under, it may be that somebody wouldn't get their full pension promise. Now, I'm talking about the private sector here. Th there are other kinds of pension plans out there which we can get to we later on. We will get to in a second. The, the pension plans that I suspect most people have heard of, the really big ones, Ontario Teachers, which own the Maple Leafs and the Raptors and the Air Canada Centre, Omers for municipal employees, the case in Quebec, what types of pensions are these? Uh, those would all be defined benefit plans, but there's a bit of a difference uh, for a number of those plans in the public sector. I mean, of course, they are extremely large, as, as you've explained. Many of these are what are called multi-employer plans, which means there are many actual employers in them. For example, OMAS has 960 employers participating in all the municipalities around Ontario. Um, the, many of these plans actually don't have the employer solely paying off that deficit that I described earlier. Them, Many of them are what's called jointly sponsored, which means that the, the active members, the employees, and the employers are sharing in the paying off of the deficit. And when, there are when we move into a world of surpluses, which is where there's more than enough money to help pay for the pensions, then they would uh, share in how those surpluses get used. Okay, presumably if you're working for a municipality or the province of Ontario or something, you've got a public sector pension, it's different from the kind of pension you would receive if you're working for a private company. Well, What's the difference? Well, given that uh, these uh, invariably have employee contributions going in, they tend to be more valuable. 
There's a lot Which of tend to be more valuable? The, the, the ones that we're talking about in the public sector, okay. the defined benefit plans. I mean, in theory, you can have one of those plans in the private sector as well. It's just that the private sector plans don't tend to have employee contributions at that level, and they are not generally as, uh, as generous. So you do find that the people in the public sector um, have a fair amount of money of their own contributions going in, and they're going to get a pretty decent pension coming out. Okay. That's our own personal pension plans. The Canada pension plan is something else. How does that fit into the mix? That is also a defined benefit plan. You know what pension you're going to get when you get through to the age at which you want to draw it. Uh, it's financed in a very different way. It doesn't have a huge fund building up. It is actually a very large fund. It's probably 130 billion now and growing. But uh, if it was fully funded the way the private uh, defined benefit plans work, the fund would be much, much bigger than that. How significant a part of the global financial system are pensions? They're very significant. Uh, if you just think through the aging baby boomers, you know, many of them are now coming into retirement. Uh, the, the point at which an individual's pension assets are the very highest are the point at which they retire. After that, their asset, their own part of the pension fund starts going down. We have a lot of people now who are approaching retirement or just uh, have been retiring amongst the baby boomers. So these funds are now pretty huge. In Canada, for example, the total of all the public sector and private sector pensions are about uh, three quarters of GDP, uh, gross domestic product. So very significant. In the UK and the US, it's even larger. Uh, the conventional wisdom, of course, is that everybody's pension plan right now is taking a kicking. Is that, in fact, the case? Yeah, I think that's probably fair to say. Everybody across the board? Not, not quite. If you happen to be an individual who has an RRSP or who's in one of these defined contribution plans, where invariably you, as the individual, could choose your investment vehicle that you wanted to be in. If you happen to be extremely risk-averse and you've... Uh, and you've uh, been in what's you know just a guaranteed fund, something where the capital cannot go down, then in fact during this uh, hellish period that we've had in the last uh, few months, your fund hasn't gone down. On the other hand, if you've had that kind of a fund for many years, your fund didn't go up much either. Well, I was talking to one of the employees in the building just before we came on here tonight, and she was complaining about the fact that her pension plan had gone down 10%. And I said... That's good. Yeah. I said, don't feel bad. I know lots of people have gone down 40 and 50 percent. And she then suddenly felt like she was ahead of the game. I'd say that uh, amongst the defined contribution plans, probably so far this year, the average person has gone down about 20 percent. That's the average. Yeah. Private versus public, any difference there? Well, again, uh, typically the defined contribution plans are in the private sector. Mm -hmm. There's not so many in the public sector. If you look at the other kind of plan, the defined benefit, where again the benefits defined. So what you're looking at is is how much money has gone has gone down in the fund. That's going to that's going to create a deficit. Those plans uh, there's a thing that's called solvency, which is what would happen if the plan were wound up. At the beginning of this year, those plans were typically about 95% solvent. In other words, with another 5% of assets, there would have been exactly the right amount of assets there to help pay for the plan if it were to be wound up at that point. Right now, that ratio is probably somewhere between 70 and 75%. That's, that sounds low. So, yeah, it is low. It's, it's historically low. That's a very large amount of money that's going to have to be put in by whoever's responsible for paying the deficit in the, in the private sector, typically the employer. Well, you take me nicely to where I wanted to go now because Finance Minister Jim Flaherty from the Government of Canada recently announced that federally regulated pension funds are going to get 10 years instead of five to repay funding shortfalls. Right. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, that's, that is correct. So let's just go to my ratio of 70% of I just described. Therefore, there is a 30% deficit sitting in the plan. Now, uh, luckily for employers, and in fact, lucky to, luckily for plan members, that doesn't have to be paid off in a single lump sum, because it would be vast if you just think about the amount of money in these plans. So there is generally a period of time to pay off that deficit. And if it's one of these so-called solvency deficits, which, which most plans are, are facing these days, until, with the, with the Flaherty announcement, which just, by the way, applied to federally regulated yes. plans, that's banking, transportation, communications companies, um, but most of the provincial plans also operate in a similar way, generally those had up to five years to pay it off. So if, let's just say, the plan had $95 of assets at the beginning of the year, the liabilities, in other words, what you needed was 100, and now it's down at 70, so there's my, there's my $30 deficit, mm -hmm. Previously, that 30 could be paid off over five years, let's say six bucks a year, um, you know, plus, uh, plus a little interest. Now, the way Flaherty has uh, described it, um, as a short-term measure, it could be paid off over 10 years, 
So the 30 is, you know, is now three per year, plus a little bit of interest. But there's two conditions attached to it. And one of them is that can only happen if plan members give permission, or, or not too many of them dissent, um, and that process would take place through the year uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. Or if the company can get what's called a letter of credit, which is effectively a kind of an IOU from a bank to cover it off, to cover off the difference between the three and the six each year, then, then you can go ahead and do that. And there's just one little element to that which is interesting. At the end of the year, if you couldn't get the letter of credit in place, maybe you couldn't get enough credit, or it's way too expensive, or you couldn't get the member permission, uh, then you can start amortizing, in other words, paying off the deficit that's remaining over five years. But presumably, you don't need 100 cent dollars in that pension, because not every single person is going to retire at once and draw on your pension, right? That's correct. But, but if you're a pensioner, or if you're a plan member, which of course the viewers are, right. the, you may w be worried about what's going to happen to your employer, especially if you're in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And you'll be looking for you know, getting that paid off as quickly as possible to give you a better feeling. The trouble with that is there's a huge sucking noise in the economy. Uh, there's a vast amount of money that has to go in. And the and it's a shame because that means that a lot of that money isn't going into capital expenditures and that can hurt the economy. And right now, everybody's talking about getting some kind of a stimulus. So in effect, the flatty measure is a form of stimulus. As you read the economic situation today, do you think people ought to be concerned about whether their pensions will be there when they need them? If you're younger, it all comes down to the, the, to the uh, credit worthiness of your employer. Public sector, let's just assume that pretty well every public sector entity is going to be there, in, in, you know, the universities included. In the private sector, we read about terrible situations where people lose their pensions. Uh, in order to decide if you're going to be worried, of course, you've got to be able to evaluate whether your employer is going to be around over the period of time while these deficits are being paid off. Uh, there will be some who, very sadly, will end up with insufficient pension. Well, the let's vast the majority will end up with enough pension. Sure, but let's give the example that's sort of in the news a great deal these days. The automakers, the Detroit right. Three. Now, if, if for whatever reason, I know they got this short-term bailout from Congress uh, today, but if for whatever reason one of them declares Chapter 11, does that mean the value of the pensions is suspect and those auto workers won't get them? It can be. Um, it, it depends on how much money is in their plans, but uh, one assumes that they, like all the other, uh, like most of the other plans, don't have enough money in their plans at the moment. And so, yes, it is potential. Uh, there is a potential for them not to get the full pension. I should ask you, who's your pension with? Oh well, you see, <laughs> I'm not in a defined contribution pension. You're not. Uh, I'm. I think you are, but I'm <laughs> not. I'm in a defined benefit pension, and uh, I just happen to. Uh, it's 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 funded not with any particular investment manager. It's, it's really funded by my company, Watson Wire. And, uh, and I mean, yes, there's an investment manager who's looking after it. Uh, in well, the what's happened to it? Well, it's, it's, I actually don't know, um, because... You don't know? No, I don't know You're what's happened to my own pension plan. Know? Well, it's probably plummeted the same as everybody else's has. <laughs> but you uh, don't plan to retire for a while, so you're I not I don't getting... plan to retire for a while. My hair's gray, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, no, I've, I've got plenty of time for my pension to come back, and uh, I believe firmly that my own company will be there all the way through to uh, till my death. Uh, from your lips to God's ears, as they say. Indeed, let's okay. hope. Ian Markham, good of you to come in tonight and help us with Pensions 101. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Steve. <laughs>